Well, we are all able to see and see my screen live. I'm just showing it. Uh, so good uh, evening, everyone. So today is with the year session eight for this NPTEL basics of biology course. And uh, Okay. Uh, so I am Shobik. I am doing integrated PhD in Indian History of Science, Bangalore. I work in Department of Biochemistry under Professor Sandeep Amishwarapas lab, and I mainly work on uh, translation group two as well as cell biology as well as some of the mice here. So. Let's start with today's session. So before you start, I would like to ask if anyone has any uh, questions regarding the session. OK, um, so. If nobody has any question, let's start with today's session. And uh, okay. so let's go with the first uh, question. The heart, the heart pumps the. So the heart pumps the fluid continuously through bodies, uh, small intestine, large intestine, windpipe, or. Uh, blood vessels, which one is the correct answer? And uh, small intestine, as you know, is the part of the. Uh, small intestine is the part of the our uh, digestive system, as well as the large intestine. Windpipe is the. Uh, is, is the organ for the respiratory system. So correct or correct is the blood vessel. So very straightforward question. So blood vessel is the correct answer. Now uh, the type of circulatory system seen in the earthworms is open circulatory systems, closed circulatory systems, no circulatory systems, both open and closed circulatory system. So earthworm, earthworm, as you know, this is the first uh, phylum that show the closed circular system new system correct so this is kind of we thought we have learned this in the i think the uh, week in the class two or class three in the week in the first week so the correct answer of course will be the closed circular system okay <clears throat> sorry the deoxygenated blood In fishes is turned into oxygenated blood by heart, lungs, gills, or blood vessel. <coughs> Sorry. So, which will be the correct answer? So, this is a this is an image of a fish circular system. So, as you can see the this is the heart, okay? This is the heart of the of the fish, and the blood oxygen rich blood comes here. The blood capillaries where will be there will be exchange and there will be different organs, right? Here will be different organs. So in between the organs, uh, there will be this in the outside the organs there will be this capillary system. Now this capillary system is responsible for exchange of uh, metabolites as well as nutrients as well as the oxygen, correct? Oxygen and carbon dioxide. Okay, 
So this in this capillary, this oxygen is taken off. Then this deoxygenated blood comes to heart again. The heart again pumps the blood to this gill capillaries, right? Now gill capillaries, there is a from the gill capillaries what they after they due to some external osmotic pressure. So uh, oxygenated blood is oxygenated blood will go inside like oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange between the in the gills and the blood again becomes oxygenated and goes back. So gill capillaries is the part where the deoxygenated blood in fishes turned into oxygenated blood. Right? So the correct answer is gills. Fish doesn't lungs also do kind of same thing, but fish doesn't have the lungs. So lungs is not not the correct answer. Okay. Um, the oxygenated uh, and deoxygenated blood in frogs, which is mixed spice. So we are talking about now frogs. Now frog frogs, as you can see here, frogs have a three chambered heart. Correct. Three chambered heart. So frogs have a three chambered heart. In this three chambered heart, we have two at uh, two at uh, uh, atrials. The left atrial here, and the right. This part is the right atrial. As you can see, the vein from the vein from the lungs as well as oxygen poor blood here comes see through this here. Probably not able to see the color. So this is the oxygen poor blood as well as the oxygenated blood from lung is coming here, and they getting mixed in this particular area, this ventricle. So in this particular, both are pumped into the ventricle. Correct. So here, oxy. Oxygenated and deoxygenated blood mix. That's why there. That's why there are three chambered heart. Correct. That's why there are three chambered heart. So in the ventricle is the part where the oxygenated blood as well as the deoxygenated blood are getting mixed. And then they again pump back. Okay, so that means where it is, where it will go. So again, it is here. From here, it's pumped back. Correct. Through the artery. But still, there is a mixing here. So, because they are evolutionarily primitive compared to it, because in human we have a four chamber blood. Correct. So the Oxygen blood for the frog, the ventricle. Okay. They have valves located closer to the surface of your body. Also have valves. Okay. Have valves that ensure blood flows in the right direction is. So they have thin valves. They are located closer to the surface. Also, valves and they ensure the blood flows in the right direction. Okay. Now, if you remember the images of a uh, images of a vein as well as an artery, what do you remember? What do you remember that if this is a artery, there is a vein. There is a basic difference was that the artery has a very thick muscle layer. Correct. This is the muscle layer, right? So artery has a thick wall, a thick muscle layer. Thick walls, vein. Have comparatively thin muscle walls 
so they are thin walled and the space between them this has a small space this is compared to a larger space now as well as you all know this artery goes deep in the body vein goes in the surface also since the in the vein the in artery blood is pumped through the from the heart correct and so its pressure is very high but in vein pressure is not that much pressure is low so to prevent that blood is going from the to other direction they have this kind of septums correct there are this kind of septums like this so to prevent the blood to go from prevent the blood to to go only in one direction correct so the correct so they have thin walls vein they have located to the surface and they have this kind of walls so this correct answer is vein okay the oxygen and nutrients are exchanged for carbon dioxide and waste at veins capillaries arteries and arteries now what the how does our system works always now uh, if this is my heart here so from a heart this is goes to the heart from the heart pumps the blood to the artery artery then from sorry so this artery then forms arterioles right Like they will form a multiple channel arterioles. Now, this arter arterioles will go to form the the arterioles get divided in very small thin species. Finally, there is a junction from where the capillary is formed, right? So, in the capillaries, we have a mixing of a oxygenated blood and the deoxygenated blood correct in the capillary so capillaries are the a very condensed network which will be like not visible properly then this artery art, art sorry this uh, capillary is here this is the capillary this capillary is then the form finally the veins correct and this vein again we transfer the blood to the heart correct and from heart from the to the heart this deoxygenated blood it comes to the heart from the heart the this deoxygenated blood if there is a if there is lung here then from heart this deoxygenated blood will go to the lungs and from lungs again the the oxygen exchange will happen and the blood will come to the heart again heart and then it will be again this constant flow will be there so this exchange is happens it exchanges part the capillary part is the part where the o2 is exchanged for co2 here even also there is a exchange of co2 in the lung those in the lung capillary but it will be just in the opposite direction correct the so o2 in the co2 as well as the waste metabolites and all correct because why this happens in the capillary because capillary this walls Though it is, it is very thick. Uh, the walls are, though arteries and veins have a thin wall, but still they are very thick. Now in capillary there are very, very much uh, constricted as well as they are very thin wall in the art in the capillary. So that's why from through the capillary it's very easy for the uh, different waste and metabolites to get out just by diffusion as well as just by osmosis. Correct. So. the correct answer is the capillaries okay now 
the division of atria and ventricles in the four chambered heart is now how does the heart pumping goes now i have given a small uh, um gift here more gift here so as you can see the uh, yeah so the deoxygenated blood i'll just start with the deoxygenated which will be easy to follow so the, as you can see the deoxygenated blood is coming to the right and right uh, ventricles correct so it this is receiving the receiving the deoxygenated blood pumping the deoxygenated blood to the so this is my left uh, atria and this is my uh, sorry not left uh, the right atria right atrium this is my right ventricles so from here and this part this blood is coming to here and the to the vena vena cava and to the to the to the heart and then the deoxygenated blood is using the pulmonary artery here to push the all the deoxygenated blood to the lungs correct so this goes towards the lungs correct on the other hand in the uh, left at left atrium the bloods blood is coming through the pulmonary vein correct from the pulmonary vein blood is coming to here to as, as well as through here we connect pulmonary veins it's coming to the this is my uh, left atria this is my left atria this is my left ventricle this is left atria as well as the left ventricle so now from the left atria the blood is pumped to the left ventricle and then it's going through the uh through the arteries going to the different the oxygenated blood is going to the different places correct so uh, now what is the my question the atria receives the blood and the ventricles from the yes see even if you right at your left at your atria is always receiving the blood correct see this is the deoxygenated blood this is the oxygenated blood atria is first receiving the blood blood then it's pumped to the ventricles in both the cases and the then vent from ventricles is pumped to the outs right for here as well as here so it either goes by here or it goes by here so atria receives the blood and the ventricles pump the blood so this is the correct answer ventricle receives the blood atria pumps no right atria receives the blood left atria no ventricle always pumps the blood right at atria receives the blood the difference is that the right atria receives the right part of the right atria or the right part of the upper of the heart always receives the always handles the deoxygenated blood the left part of the heart always handles the oxygenated blood so if you cut the heart like like kind of this or i should if i just use some other mark ink if you cut the heart in this you follow the green line like this and cut the heart in the left and the right part like this correct so if you can see this is the right part of the heart this is the left part so right part is always receiving the deoxygenated left part is always receiving the oxygenated okay. the normal heart rate for the av node is normal heart rate for so we have two kinds of nodes right here we have the sa node 
kind at that kind of this position we have the SA nodes, and as kind of this positions we have the AV nodes. You know? So we have two nodes, SA node and AV node. Sinoatrial node as well as actual ventricular node. Correct? If I am not sure if I'm right in the correct sinoatrial node plus actual ventricular node. There are two nodes. Now, SA node is the main responsible for that, for the uh, pumping of the heart. SA node signals to the AV node from the so SA node pumps to the atria, and AV node pumps the ventricles. So this is kind of a factual question. AV node beats around 40 to 60 bits per minute, and SA node is 60 to 100 bits per minute. The oxygen carrying proteins in the blood is present in the. So, what is the oxygen carrying protein? It's the hemoglobin, right? The globins. What does hemoglobin made up of? The to alpha, to beta, and four heme group. Right. So this is two beta one, beta two, alpha one, alpha sorry, alpha two, alpha one. And these are the heme groups. Correct. Four heme groups are there. So this is the oxygen carrying cell. So it's present in which cells? Of course, the red blood cells or erythrocytes. That's why erythrocytes are red because hemoglobin are, are in red in color. Correct. The hormone essential for production of the blood cells. So which hormone we are talking about here? Anyone in the class, which hormone we are talking about here? So this hormone is this hormone, right? What I'm writing. Correct. Just change the color. So erythropoietin, correct? The problem in which organ synthesize erythropoietin? Remember that whenever there is a less oxygen saturation, O2 percentage, or the SpO2, the brain. signals that particular organ to synthesize more erythropoietin which goes in the bone marrow which is the which has those hematopoietic stem cells and HSCs and from where the RBC is formed ultimately by different developmental stages. Which is this organ? Is it bone marrow? No, bone marrow doesn't secrete it. Mean? No, isn't it? Is it liver? 
I don't think so. Liver, because liver is no, it's kidney, correct? Now I will have I will ask you to do why I'll ask you a small question solve by yourself or try to find why kidney only evolved. Kind of question that you should count why kidney evolved to make erythropoid. Why not some other organ? Why not bone marrow itself? Why not? Why not some other? There's some questions that you, sir, questions that you should learn. And let's see if we have any answers. Correct? In next class, we may discuss this question. Why kidney evolved into make erythropoietin? You know? Maybe in some other, or maybe in some later classes, we can discuss this thing that why kidney only evolved to make erythropoietin. The buildup of plaque in atherosclerosis is occurs. So as you can see, this is the atherosclerosis. I have got this image from Netmets. I just forgot to cite that. Cite that for from where I got. Anyway, so during atherosclerosis, what happens that this fats they accumulate, right? The fats just accumulate. And there are um, immune cells comes and they kind of this, especially the macrophages. Now they get hyperactivated and becomes foam cells. So foam cells are nothing but macrophages <coughs> that has um, that has been uh, overactivated. I'll, I want to show you one uh, image for this. this. So I'll just go back and see one of my. Previous one of my previous sessions. Um, just see it. Just a second, I'll just find the course. Oh, um. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good picture. I should have got this. Yes. So how does atherosclerosis work? This is the image. Right? So how does atherosclerosis work? So as you can see here, the atherosclerosis disorders that atherosclerosis is a disease that occurs when a plaque builds up inside the artery. The arteries get hardened. Right? You can see the hardened. It's hard. Due to this plug, they are getting narrow, which can restrict the blood flow and lead to blood clots and heart attack and stroke. Now, how it happens? Okay, this is a very interesting mechanism to how it happens. So there is free circulating neutrophils, correct? And when the neutrophils circulate, they try to get at ad they have this adhesive factor. Now, when neutrophils travel, as you can see, there are free neutrophils. Neutrophils, as you know. They are very, uh, as well as monocytes also, they are patrols, they patrol the blood, right? So they first circulate, then they trigger, then slow rolling iodist. After that, there are some addition molecules, so which that extra vessation, this, is, this term is known as extra Vasation. I will include this slide in the, the extra vasation, correct? So this thing is known as extra vasation, this particular thing, to the gap in the blood capillaries, and they go, okay? Okay, 
and effect of in so what happens is that the addition molecules now due to this ld now when this ldl plat particles comes inside they they got oxidized here now this oxidized ldls signals this macrophages this, this kind of like a foreign body how the foreign body interacts now this foreign body this macrophages comes and engulfs this uh engulfs this uh, oxidized ldl particles and they becomes to form the foam cells now finally this foam cells are like they get accumulated of foam cells and ultimately this forms a inflammatory site which ultimately leads to a atherosclerosis now i have a very good video you should see here this watch this video sorry uh one second and maybe the sound will not come maybe Welcome to another patho video. The topic of this video is atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is a condition where lipid plaques form within the walls of arteries. It is a specific type of arteriosclerosis, which is the generalized condition of hardening of arterial walls, whereas atherosclerosis is specific to the buildup of lipids that cause arterial walls to narrow and restrict blood flow. Atherosclerosis can be especially dangerous for the heart, since it often affects coronary arteries which supply oxygen and nutrients to the heart. In severe cases, when blood flow through the coronary arteries is cut off, a heart attack, also known as a myocardial infarction, can occur, where heart cells or cardiac myocytes are deprived of oxygen and may die. Normally, most of the low-density lipoproteins, or LDLs, pass through the endothelial cells by transcytosis from the blood and then enter body cells by receptor-mediated endocytosis to be used in normal cell processes. The progression of atherosclerosis begins when the endothelial cells of the arterial wall become damaged. This can be caused by hypertension, smoking, hyperglycemia, and hypercholesterolemia, which is an increased number of LDLs in the blood. Endothelial cell damage increases the permeability of the arterial wall, allowing LDLs to enter the tunica intima. White blood cells such as monocytes normally move freely through the blood vessels and do not attach to endothelial cells as they stream past. However, when endothelial cells are exposed to irritating stimuli or damage, they will express adhesion molecules that can capture nearby white blood cells. These white blood cells undergo morphological changes that allow them to flatten and squeeze between endothelial cells. This movement of white blood cells out of the bloodstream is called diapedesis. White blood cells are capable of producing free radicals. And when these free radicals come in contact with LDLs, oxidation occurs. Oxidized LDL particles are especially effective at attracting and activating white blood cells. White blood cells then engulf the modified LDL particles, which stimulates them to produce even more oxygen free radicals it becomes easy to imagine that an area of endothelial damage will lead to an accumulation 
of modified LDL particles and migrating white blood cells, a positive feedback situation begins to arise when accumulating immune cells and modified LDLs bring in even more immune cells and modified LDLs. Macrophages in the tunica intima start to engulf modified LDL particles. Ultimately, this leads to the production of a cell called a foam cell. A foam cell is saturated with LDL particles, and the excessive amount of lipid in the cell gives the cytoplasm a foamy appearance. Foam cells ultimately die and release their contents, which are then quickly engulfed by other nearby white blood cells. Please note that the animation shows smooth muscle cells, also engulfing LDL cholesterol. Eventually, the accumulating lipid from the processes just described and the fragments of dead cells produce an area with the lipid core that begins to form a plaque. Endothelial cells cover the plaque. The plaque accumulates calcium salts and more dead cells over time, and it will harden. This plaque in the arterial wall is atherosclerosis. If the endothelial cells over the plaque are compromised, blood clots can form on the vessel wall. Remember that healthy endothelial cells normally express inhibitors of clotting, but now since they are damaged, they no longer do this. Over time, ruptured areas of plaque may create a situation where an area of plaque may jut out into the vessel lumen. A clot that forms and attaches to the wall is called a thrombus. If the clot breaks loose from the arterial wall and floats downstream to even smaller vessels, it is called an embolus. Here is an animated summary now of the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis. Thanks for watching. Okay. Um, so this was one of the videos that's showing atherosclerosis. I just wanted to share with this. I'll add this uh, to the class, to this slide also. So the build of a plaque in atherosclerosis occur, external lining of vein, inner lining of vein, inner lining of the artery, external lining of a of an artery. Okay. So which will use the correct option so this is the inner part of the artery cut it is the inner lining of the artery the normal pressure when is the heart rest now when is the heart pumps is the diastolic pressure right diastolic pressure which is the normal is the 120 mm h when the heart rests the is the systolic pressure which is 80 mmh. So the correct answer is the normal pressure when the heart is the heart rests between the beat is the one second. I am. 
Oh, I'm just. Just I think I'm just confused with the story going guys. Yeah, sorry, my my mistake, my mistake. I'll just sorry. Uh, so so this is the systolic pressure. My God. This is the diastolic pressure. So this is like diast. I remember is like that. It's like diastolic means dilated. So heart rate so is dilated. That's why it's the ATM image. So it is diastolic as and the ATM image is the. This is the correct answer. The cells that activate cytotoxic T cells. Because infected target cells in adaptive immunity is, if you remember, uh, just try to remember the previous video that I have shown that how that the cells get activated. T reg cells, T H cells, memory T cells, or CD8 plus T cells. This is people should answer. When some pathogen comes, the first engulfed by the say macrophages, correct? Then this macrophages goes and activates the by MHC class two pathway. Class two pathway they activates the TH cells, correct? Then this TH cells goes and so these are also known as also known as APCs. The helper cells then activates B cells and T C cells. So T C cells, cytotoxic T cells, which kills infected cells, especially in the viral cells. B cells secret antibodies. Correct. So the correct is that helper T cells is the correct answer. The myelin sheath of the neuron that rotates around the uh, insulation is. So this is the myelin sheath. Which cell is where is the this around the axon is known as the Schwann cells. Okay, so next one is another video animation video for your better understanding is the. A video on muscle contractions. So, yes. you use muscles every day to do activities. This woman is using muscles to breathe, circulate blood, and move her hand to take notes. Your cardiac and smooth muscle tissues are involuntary. You do not consciously control their actions. Skeletal muscle works under voluntary control. Skeletal muscles are composed of bundles of muscle fibers. Muscle fibers are long cylindrical cells containing several nuclei. Muscles will contract or relax when they receive signals from the nervous system. A neuromuscular junction is the site of the signal exchange. This is where the synaptic bulb of an axon terminal and muscle fiber connect. Muscle fibers are composed of many myofibrils. 
a myofibril contains contractile units called sarcomeres. Sarcomeres run adjacent to one another down the length of the myofibril. Each sarcomere consists of alternating thick and thin protein filaments, giving skeletal muscle its striated appearance. The muscle contracts when these filaments slide past each other. The thick filaments are myosin, which are anchored at the center of the sarcomere, called the M-line. The thin filaments are composed of the protein actin, which are anchored to the Z-lines on the outer edges of the sarcomere. Because the actin filaments are anchored to the Z-lines, the sarcomere shortens from both sides when actin filaments slide along the myosin filaments. Although the action between the filaments is described as sliding, the myosin filament actually pulls the actin along its length. The cross bridges of the myosin filaments attach to the actin filaments and exert force on them to move. This action is known as the sliding filament mechanism of muscle contraction. In this model, the sarcomeres shorten without the thick or thin filaments changing in length. A contraction be Coded. begins when a bound ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP and inorganic phosphate. This causes the myosin head to extend and can attach to a binding site on actin, forming a cross bridge. An action called the power stroke is triggered, allowing myosin to pull the actin filament toward the M-line, thereby shortening the sarcomere. ADP and inorganic phosphate are released during the power stroke. The myosin remains attached to actin until a new molecule of ATP binds, freeing the myosin to either go through another cycle of binding and more contraction or remain unattached to allow the muscle to relax. Muscle contractions are controlled by the actions of calcium. The thin actin filaments are associated with regulatory proteins called troponin and tropomyosin. When a muscle is relaxed, tropomyosin blocks the cross-bridge binding sites on actin. When calcium ion levels are high enough and ATP is present, calcium ions bind to the troponin, which displaces tropomyosin, exposing the myosin binding sites on actin. This allows myosin to attach to a binding site on actin, forming a cross bridge. Calcium ions are stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum and are released in response to signals from the nervous system to contract. Neurotransmitter molecules are released from a neuron and bind to receptors, which depolarizes the membrane of the muscle fiber. The electrical impulse travels down the T tubules and opens calcium stores. Calcium ions flow to the myofibrils where they trigger a muscle contraction. As the actin and myosin slide along each other, the entire sarcomere shortens as the Z lines draw closer to the M line. As the sarcomeres in myofibrils contract, the entire muscle fiber will shorten. When muscle fibers contract in unison, a muscle can produce enough force to move the body allowing you to take notes. Okay, so this was a small video about how muscle contraction work, how the actin and myosin filament contracts to each other. Here's a short slide of how, uh, what are the different actin binding proteins that helps in muscle contractions. So of course, uh, one, of, one of them, the very important is alpha actinine and fimbrin, as you can see here, alpha actinine and fimbrin. This cross-links the actin fibers, as you can see, and the difference between alpha actin and fimbrin is that alpha actin, that the space between the muscle is quite high, but fimbrin makes it very uh, thick. And there are also the actin filaments, actin subunits binding protein, which I am not going into details. There will be other things like spectrin, uh, filamin, ERM, which are responsible to uh, attach the uh, actin filaments to the extracellular matrix and also which I'm not going to details, okay? So the striated appearance in the skeletal muscle is due to repeating bands of proteins of which two muscles. So one has like this, correct? And draw the muscle like this, another as this, you have seen them in the video, correct? 
curl. Right? Now what is this? Is it the actin? Is it the myosin? So the repeating bands of protein, of course, is due to actin and myosin. The type of contraction occurs due to lowering the phase of the bi-shaped curl, eccentric, isometric, isotonic, or twitch. You have known that there are different kinds of contractions, and you know that eccentric is the correct answer. If you go to the slide and see different kind of construction, you will see that the eccentric contraction with the contraction which happens due to like it shortens the muscle kind of, okay? A neurotransmitter upon binding to binding leads to influx of sodium inside the cells during an action potential, which again then leads rise to this calciums, correct? And which gives rise to the actin myosin contraction. Actin myosin. Contraction, which is the uh, the acetylcholine, correct? Transmitter within the from the acetylcholine comes through the the junction, also known as neuromuscular junction. The muscle tissue which show the crosslink stripes is the cardiac muscle. So how the cardiac muscle look? They have this kind of thing. Right? And this. Then they will have this kind of thing. They have the nucleus here. So these are the cardiac. And these are known as the inter disc. I'd rather would like to show you one VT, one uh, image so that one histological image so that it will be easy to understand for you. I should. Uh, yeah, so this is basically how a uh, cardiac muscle looks like. So as you can see, there is this kind of uh, striated fibers and these this kind of fibers, these have this intercalated discs, correct? So the so cross link side, so these are the cross links. So this is the cardiac muscle. The homodimeric protein of the sarcomeric Z line that anchors anchors the ends of the F-actin. Now, if you remember here, see, 
is the actin filaments correct f actin is nothing but a filamentous actin so f is the actin filaments and this is connecting to each other so there are two types of protein that it does membrane and actin let's see which one is given here desmin alpha actin in troponin and myosin troponin binds to myosin doesn't work myosin and actin doesn't have this it doesn't anchors correct so and desmin also what does desmin do I hope this mean, this mean is not shown here. There were hundreds of uh, this types of proteins. So the correct answer will be the alpha actin. The degenerative disorder of the central nervous system that affects the muscular system and the movement is Parkinson's disease, muscular dystrophy, myasthenia gravis, or the carpal tunnel, carpal tunnel syndrome. So how do you differentiate between this? So the muscular dystrophy is a not a it's a muscle disorder, right? Is a muscle disorder. Is not a disorder of the central nervous system myasthenia gravis again is a mild muscle disorder caused by a autoimmune disorder the carpal tunnel system it's it's because of the nerve disorder it's a nerve related disorder but not in the central nervous system parkinson disease is the is the disorder of the central nervous system okay parkinson's disease is the disorder of the central nervous system which affects the movement and so this is because of the there is a drop in the dopamine level drop in the dopamine level that cause mainly the Parkinson's however still the research is going on that how uh, this kind of uh, this thing has both there are as well as environmental triggers there could be genetic disorders there could be age related disorders okay so but there are still the such is going the correct answer is the parkinson disease okay so yeah so those are the those are the questions from the week 9 is there any questions from week 9 if you i need to address Any questions from the from this class or any other previous class? Okay. So yeah, in this class, then we discussed. We please go through these videos. Because this will help you understand the things quite well. And uh, yeah, so we have discussed many of the things. And so in next class, we'll, we'll discuss about the uh, nervous system, correct? So we'll be deciding discussing with the nervous system. So that will be the week 10th session for the week test and yeah and that's it so i hope there is no more questions see if any more questions please drop me an email or ask here or you can 
let's ask in that Google group, which also I'm part of, so I can also answer. And and uh, that's it then okay um good night and let's meet next week at next tuesday at 7 p.m thank you thank you everyone for joining